hey sexies make sure you guys are subscribed um if you're not subscribed subscribe and if you are subscribed make sure you check the subscribe button to check and see if you are still subscribed because youtube unsubscribes people make sure you guys give this video a like because if you like it then click the like button because it shows me what you guys like and don't like so please do that hey everybody hey guys hello everybody hi <coughs> <coughs> okay Hey guys, today we're going to be watching a movie that I just really wanted to watch today. This was really requested by no one. I decided that I wanted to watch I, Tanya because I was going to watch it on my free time and I was like, well, I'll just film this because I really want to just watch a film that I uh, am obsessed with and I just want to watch it with you guys. So this will be like commentary, but mostly me just saying, oh my God, I love that scene because I know we all love watching that. That is good content. <laughs> my videos go either one of two ways. Um, oh my God, I love that scene. Oh my god, I hate this scene. Last video I filmed, I watched Ice Prince, and so now I'm gonna watch I, Tanya. I love I, Tanya. I think it was snubbed, and I'm here to tell you all the reasons why I think it was snubbed. Based on irony-free, wildly contradictory, totally true interviews with Tanya Harding and Jeff Galooney. Luli. Jeff Galooley. What kind of name is that? No wonder why he was insane. That's that's very close, by the way, I'm just saying. Before we even get into this movie, I just want to say this movie really gave me a Tanya Harding redemption arc. I don't know if I should believe it or not, but I was I was there for it. I was there for the Tanya Harding redemption arc. Concentrate. Call out a clean pause. Something. Hey guys, you don't know this, but when I said I paused, I paused for like 20 to 30 minutes because I felt so incredibly sad and I kept drawing blanks when I was watching it. I only got six minutes into the movie and I could not get a word out of commentary and it made me really depressed, like unreasonably sad. I got so unmotivated. Um, it was basically like a mental block when it came to making commentary and you guys don't care. But I wanted to tell you, to be honest, my mouth just made like a fart noise. That was fun. So maybe by the end of this filming, I will have zero commentary, but we are not quitters. We're not quitters and we're gonna try to do it again. So we're gonna start off from where we left off. And we're going to get through this movie and whether I throw away this entire video or not, I'm going to get through this movie because I'm not a quitter. I would not quit. McKenna Grace is literally the it moment of literally everything. They cast her for everything and she literally knows the assignment every single time. I know every single little girl that is in the audition room gets scared. They, they're shaking in their boots when she comes into the room. I know they do. She just changes her hair color and then she's every single role because she knows the assignment. I'll tell you, that little girl, she's getting checks and, and, and people are scared of her. On the ice, I was there to inspire her. I did not even know that Lavana had a bird on her shoulder throughout like probably the first half of the movie until she like points at it or something or she like says something to it. I did not know that she had a bird on her shoulder. I kind of cried when he started making the fur coat. I really did almost like start to cry because I thought it was such, it just, it made me so emotional. And it looked nice, come on. You gotta move now, honey. Tawny, please. She trained for the scene from that scene and gifted with Chris Evans. Hey! You know what I mean? Like she definitely, she definitely took some, some of the inspiration from that scene. I know she did. I know she did because that scene in Gifted literally made me cry. Take me with you! And now she does it again. She hits it again in this movie. Why does she play a prodigy in every single role? You're in my way. Don't put braces on a fully grown adult and expect me to believe that they are a teenager. You know what I mean? Why would you do that to me? Like you're really expecting me to believe that Margot Robbie is a teenager, 14, 15. Just cause she has braces doesn't change. It doesn't mean, it doesn't change anything. She literally looks like a grown adult. Yeah, you're you're making me believe that 
those motherfuckers are 16 years old. I don't know how old Jeff is supposed to be, but you're you're telling me that these bitches are supposed to be going on a little high school date with another grown adult. This is just a f freaking adult dinner. She is not supervising nothing. You two fuck yet? I like how it's like, it's supposed to be way more awkward if they actually look like teenagers. It would look, it would be such a better scene if they actually look like teenagers. But it's just like, oh, you two fuck yet? It just doesn't seem as like uncomfortable as they wanted that scene to be. Because Sebastian Stan is a grown adult and so is Margot Robbie. So I think that is my criticism of this film is that they should have actually cast the teenagers for that scene because I think it would actually made it better. You need me to um, tighten up before you reconnect. Okay. Car boys. Boo! Get off the stage! Get out of here! We don't want you in this town! Car girls? Hubba hubba! Come here, sugar! I don't really know what that was supposed to be. I think I take it back though. I'm actually a pretty meek guy. Um... Meek, more like beak. You look like a fuck. You look like fucking beaker from the Muppets. The only reason why I think we should stop making skating shows is because I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually do CGI face work that makes it look real. We can make entire CGI earthquakes and natural disasters. We can make whole entire universes. Magic exists. All of this stuff and we cannot track a face to make it look realistic in an ice skating show. For Christ's sake, oh my god. See, that looks like a head that's about to be decapitated. It looks like it's floating off of her head. Like, that is insane looking. Like, you're not gonna do any shadow work to- Like, that's a floating head. Like, it look- Okay, I'm gonna do it. Why does he have the reverse Hitler mustache? Because he doesn't have it right here, but he has it right here. What's up with that? It's a reverse Hitler. No word said, but it's one of the best scenes of the movie. It's one of the best scenes in the movie because there's no words. It's literally just both of their faces acting and they are incredible. They are incredible. Like obviously that scene, super traumatic, super dramatic and traumatic. But I think the way the actors really performed in that scene was just like, it's one of my favorite scenes. I love that scene from the movie for the sole fact of just like, it's so simple. They left it all up to the actors and shit, they did that. Maybe you should pick another sport. Suck, Suck my dick. dick. This, is this is fucking, fucking rigged. rigged. It is, it literally is. Stars shining bright above you. Mary in the first idiot who says you're pretty. You fuck dumb. You don't marry dumb. That's why she won the Oscar, you know? Because of that line right there. Coming from the lady who has a couple marriages. I just don't think that's all right. I just don't think that's okay. This shot is the ultimate award-winning shot right here. Yeah, that's cinematic. And I feel like we should appreciate it all more. They put all their budget into this scene as they should because it definitely looks like it. It was amazing. It literally gave me chills when I saw it the first time. You can still see the floating head, but it's a little bit better than all the other scenes. And I love it that they recreated that shot of Tanya Harding so well. It literally looks identical. It looks identical. I proved everyone wrong. That's it. That's the shot right there. This is the ultimate scene ever. Ultimate recreation ever. It's so good. It's so fucking amazing. I was the best figure skater, skater in the world. At one point in time. Incredible. That's the best scene ever. It is 
technically a perfect scene. Technically, it's a perfectly executed scene that captures not only like the emotion that the actual video of Tanya Harding when she did the triple axel, but it also is just a stunning scene as well. Margot Robbie captures the essence of Tanya Harding actually in the actual video of Tanya Harding so well. So she's, she captures it so well, and then it's just technically a beautiful scene. The cinematic beauty of it all, and I love it so much. I, I mean, what, what kind, kind of freaking, freaking person, person bashes in their friend's, friend's knee? knee? Who would do that to a friend? The storytelling of this movie is superb. Oh, this is why it's one of my favorite movies, because- God damn it! Ah! Uh, I can't even put it into words, because I'm not a film critic. I just, I just think it has like, such a great balance between drama, almost like this dark comedy, and then like also having that like biopic also added onto it. I think the performances carry the movie though. As much as I love the writing and I love the screenplay, performances are what do it for you. You know what I mean? These actors did it. Although I think Amy Adams looks more like Tonya Harding, Margot Robbie played the role. Like I don't think anyone could do it like Margot Robbie. Like I love Amy Adams though, don't get me wrong. Literally would die for her, but this is it. She actually did this. Sorry, this movie is giving me like a mix of everything I love. Breaking the fourth wall. I love anything that breaks the fourth wall in a good way. In a good way. I love a biopic. And I also love kind of like a mockumentary style by using the tapes, going off of the tapes that were actually the Tanya Harding tapes or the Tanya tapes. I forget what they're called. It has just such a mix of everything. And it's a perfect movie. I need to see a wholesome American family and you, you just refuse to play along. Well, you're obviously gay. I don't know what that had to do with anything. I think I was just trying to make a point that he also wasn't like the American, uh, you know, standard or whatever, like the societal standard either. Like you're obviously gay. Like, shut up. Like, you know what it's like to not fit in. I don't know why I just said that. I wish I had a mother like me instead of nice. Nice gets you shit. I didn't like my mother either, so what? I fucking gave you a gift. Okay, Whiplash. Okay, JK Simmings. Am I rushing or dragging? Rushing or dragging? Like, it's very much giving JK Simmons vibes. Do you think Allison and JK, like, hang out? Because they're like, we play the, we play the, we play the abusive teacher, abusive mothers. You know what I mean? She's like, I made you a fucking champion. And he's like, rushing or dragging? Rushing or dragging? Leads, I mean, it's what well, you, you all, all came, came here, for, folks. The fucking, fucking incident. incident. The fucking incident. That's when I noticed there was a bird. I didn't know there was a bird the entire time until that. She goes, and I go, a bird. I just can't believe how common hitmen are. I don't know. Would you hire a hitman or would you just do it yourself? Oh, I don't know. Would I hire a hitman? Like a hitman to actually kill someone or a hitman to just mur like injure someone? I don't know, I feel like it's a waste. It's kind of expensive just to injure someone. Obviously I wouldn't- Oh fuck, I just messed up my lipstick. Obviously I wouldn't do any of it, but I feel like it's kind of a waste of money if you just hire them to injure them. Would ice skating even be known? Would figure skating even be known if, if it wasn't for this incident? Really, honestly. I'm just kidding. That's a complete discredit to the actual sport of figure skating and I'm sorry that it came out of my mouth. Once I knew about it and didn't report it and try to cover it all up, I was guilty. Well, no shit. Once you knew about it and tried to cover it up and didn't report it, like, I guess they found me guilty. Mm, it's a reach if you think that. But do you think that CBS, who was showing the games, was gonna let this ginormous ratings fucker not happen? Having Tanya Harding removed from skating and like banning her from skating competitions was literally the worst thing they could have done for figure skating publicity ever. You would have had guaranteed fucking views after that. As the figure skating community, like, you screwed yourself over not keeping Tanya Harding in the game because people would have came back to watch that every single time. You know what I mean? Before it even happens, this scene has so much emotion. It's literally one of my favorite performances ever. She delivers such rawness in this scene that transcends through the camera. And just, God damn it, I love it so much.
dude fucking the best scene ever i don't know why i related to it so much i thought it was such a humane scene i love scenes like that because it just creates such a connection to the audience and really gives such a human level portrayal on the screen. Why I love this scene and why I love this movie, you know, I and I love Margot Robbie's portrayal of it is because it shows a wide variety and the complexity of female emotions in a movie. And I love that we see her go from the top of the world to rock bottom and we see such a well-rounded portrayal of female emotion. Personally, I love the scene where she's putting on makeup. I think it has many different interpretations for it. I had my own interpretation of it. It showcases a break that a lot of people have and that I have where you're putting on makeup and you're trying to get it together, but everything is falling apart. The frustration that courses through your body as you're staring at yourself in the mirror and it feels like you cannot have a grasp on anything. It's not a grand, unique thing. I think it's portrayed a lot in movies, but it's one of my favorites when it do it's done with uh, women characters. It's it's something that I think is can be really impactful if done correctly, and I think that's done correctly in I, Tonya. That's why I love it so much, and that's why I have so much to say about it, and why I think it holds such complexity within it. Um, this might just be me talking about my ass and having some really surface level interpretation of the scene that I am trying to, people might think I'm trying to make seem less shallow. I don't really know. People always have some shit to say. People have shit to say about whatever I say, so I might as well just say what I want. I love it. I love it. And I'm so sorry for going on such a long ramble about that, but I just love it. All I know is eating. That's, That's all, all I, know. I know. And I, I am no, no one if I can't. No, I can't. Okay. They shouldn't have done this to her. I'm sorry. She shouldn't have been banned. I'm making a statement she shouldn't have banned from stating. That's enough. You can't. Please, because. Like, her sentencing was way too harsh, I believe. I've given Just you... send me to jail and then I've I can I've given still you stay. my decision. But then, like, also, like, I don't know if the movie just, like, gave her a great redemption arc that I'm just supporting and I don't know. Maybe Tanya Harding, like, did it. I don't know. Like, I just don't believe that they should have banned her for life. And by the skating community, the figure skating committee fucked up on that. You got fucked too by the judge. I'm just saying. I had never seen these clips of Tanya Harding before this movie. So whenever they showed the ending credits with the actual footage of Tanya Harding, I was like, are you kidding me? Like they really did that. Girl, choreographer, they just, it was identical. I don't think she should have been banned for life. I'll tell you that. I think her sentence was too rough. It's my opinion after watching the movie and knowing nothing of the true events. So, yeah. Best movie ever. Really got snubbed during Oscar season. Or, I mean, award season. Just the most snubbed movie ever. It's got a great way of telling, you know, a true story or whatever. I think it definitely livens up the genre of a biopic. I think a lot of people think of biopics as boring slow and usually they spent half the time wondering if it's accurate or not i think itanya does an amazing thing which it brings you out of that doubting mindset and it just lets you sit and go into the film which i think is important if you're doing a biopic you don't want people to be sitting there wondering is this true it was like obviously i'm saying that now in my commentary but like when the first time i watched it, i was not thinking that i was just like oh my god just in love with the film. People might say that I'm stupid and that I don't know what I'm talking about and that blah, 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 blah. I'm not a film critic and I don't know anything. Why well, I'm not a film critic and I don't know anything. Um, I'm just giving my opinions online, which is completely legal and allowed to do. So go fuck yourself, suck my dick. I don't really care. I'm gonna say what I want and you can move on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought of this movie or this video in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe so you can see more videos from me. Share this video with your friends if you liked it. And you guys can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Instagram is at tcallevel and Twitter is at leveltrin. And you can also follow me on Letterboxd. My letterbox is at leveltrin as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!